In this video, I'm going to walk you through solving three different types of solubility equal equilibrium problems. The first problem is asking us to calculate the molar solubility of lead 2 fluoride, PBF2, and we've been given the KSP value. To solve these types of problems, we need to use an ice table, which means that our first job is to write a balanced equation for the dissociation of the PBF2 compound. PBF2 compound exists in equilibrium with the lead 2 plus ion, PB2 plus aqueous, and also two fluoride ions, 2F minus. Don't forget that that little subscript 2 in the PBF2, that means that we have two of these fluoride ions. In the ice table, as you know, the I row represents the initial conditions, the initial amounts prior to this reaction taking place. So we've done enough, enough ice tables to know that prior to the start of the reaction, we don't have any products yet. We do have some amount of our reactant PBF2, but in this situation, we actually have no idea how much we have. There is nothing in this problem that's telling us how much PBF2 we're starting with. And actually, we're never going to figure it out. But as you'll see, as we solve this problem, it's going to end up not being a, a big deal at all. Because this is an equilibrium problem uh, reaction, we know that some of the PBF2 will dissociate. We just don't know how much. So we're going to use the symbol X to represent the amount that dissociates. And then we're going to use the stoichiometry of the equation to help us figure out the X values for the lead ion and the fluoride ion. Because this is a 1 to 1 to 2 relationship, we have one X dissociating, we're making one PB2 plus ion and two of the F minus ion. So that's where this two comes from. When this is all done, we have like no idea still how much PBF2 is present. We know that we have X PB2 plus and two X F minus. So there's our ice table. Now this question is asking us to calculate the molar solubility. The molar solubility is the amount of PBF2 that dissolves in units of moles per liter. So this is going to be the moles of PBF2 that actually are going to dissolve per liter of our solution. The moles of PBF2 that actually dissolve is represented right here in the ice table. So this minus x, that is representing how much of the PBF2 actually dissolves. So to figure out the molar solubility, we just simply need to solve for x. Just like any other equilibrium problem, our next step is going to be to write an equilibrium expression, KSP. KSP is our products, PB2+. Plus and F minus, don't forget to raise to the stoichiometric coefficients. And we leave out PBF2 because it's a solid, and that means that it's left out of the equilibrium expression. And this is why it doesn't actually matter that we don't know enough about PBF2 because it doesn't show up over here in our calculations. So now we can plug in the information that we know um, about the KSP, the lead ion, and the fluoride ion. We know the KSP value is 4.1 times 10 to the minus 8. The PB2 plus ions being represented by X. And the F minus ion is being represented by 2x. And don't forget that we need to square the 2x. Now, this is an area where students sometimes get a little bit tripped up about exactly where to place that the parentheses and the power. What I've written just now, this is actually incorrect. But a lot of students make this mistake. The squared term in this equilibrium expression is outside of the brackets of the fluoride symbol. So we're taking the fluoride concentration and squaring it. The fluoride concentration is represented by 2x, so we need to square this whole entire 2x term. So this um, square term goes on the outside of the parentheses. So we can simplify this equation, 4.1 times 10 to the minus 8, is equal to 4x cubed. What I've done there is just taken some algebra on this whole side and combined all of it together. 2 squared is 4, and then we have x squared and then another x. Then we can just use our algebra skills to solve for x. We're going to divide both sides by 4, and then we're going to take the cube root, and what we get is 0 0.00217 for the molar solubility, so 0 0.00217 moles per liter. 
The next problem that we're going to solve is pretty similar. This one is just asking us for the solubility instead of the molar solubility. So we'll begin again by writing a balanced equation, aluminum hydroxide, ALOH3, solid in equilibrium with Al3+, plus and 3OH-. minus. We're going to make an ice table. I hope you enjoy my dog playing with her squeaky toy in the background. <laughs> minus x plus x and plus 3x. Again, pay attention to the stoichiometric coefficients. At the in equilibrium, we're not sure how much aluminum we have, aluminum hydroxide we have, but as you know, that's going to end up being okay. We have x aluminum and 3x hydroxide. Let's write our equilibrium expression, Ksp is going to be our aluminum concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration cubed. Don't forget about that three, that means that it's gonna be cubed. Now we can plug in our Ksp value, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 33, that's very small. Our symbol for aluminum ion is x and for the hydroxide ion is three x. And outside of the 3x term, we are raising that to the power of 3. This simplifies to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 33 is equal to 27x to the fourth. Again, using a lot of algebra here, 3 cubed is 27. And then we have x cubed and then another x as well. So that gives us x to the fourth. We'll divide both sides by 27. And then we will take the, is it the fourth root? <laughs> I don't know what the math term is. And we get a value of x of 2.86 times 10 to the minus nine. Now this value of x, just like in the problem up above, this is the molar solubility. This is moles per liter. This particular problem is asking us for the solubility, which is grams per liter. So we do have one more step to do here. 2.86 times 10 to the minus nine moles of aluminum hydroxide, ALOH3, per liter. And then we can just do a simple mole to gram conversion. There are 78 grams of ALOH3 per every one mole. So that's going to allow those mole units to cancel. And we will be left with a solubility, not molar solubility, of 2.2 times 10 to the minus 7 grams per liter. We've got one more problem left to do that's going to be a little bit different. This problem is asking us to calculate the Ksp value of FeOH3 if a saturated solution has a particular value of hydroxide ions. Again, we're going to use an ice table. For all of these problems, we're using an ice table. So we'll start by writing a balanced equation, FeOH3 solid in equilibrium with the Fe3 plus ion aqueous and three of the hydroxide ions also aqueous. This ice table is going to be set up a little bit differently. So in this ice table, again, we don't have any idea how much of that solid we're starting with, and we know that we're not starting with any product at all. We know that this is a minus x, this is a plus x, and this is a plus 3x. Again, we're looking at the stoichiometric coefficients to help us determine if it's x or 3x. And then when this is in equilibrium, again, we are not going to have any idea how much of the iron hydroxide we have, which is okay. We have X of the iron ion and we have 3X of the OH minus ion. The problem is telling us that the OH minus concentration is 1.35 times 10 to the minus 9. So we actually have a numerical value of 3X. We can use this equation right here to solve for X. So dividing it by 3 dividing 1.35 times 10 to the minus seven by three, that gives us the value of X, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 10. We're trying to determine the value of Ksp. That is gonna come from the iron concentration, Fe3 plus, times the hydroxide concentration cubed. And we have a value of the iron concentration. We also have a value of the hydroxide concentration. 4.5 times 10 to the minus 10 times 1.35 times 10 to the minus 9, and don't forget to cube it.
there. So again, we're taking this hydroxide concentration. We're knowing that that is the final amount of hydroxide. We are using this to solve for X, plugging that into X for the iron, and then we are replacing those values in the equilibrium expression with the actual numerical values from the ice table and then solving for KSP. Sometimes students feel like this extra cubed here is kind of cheating, but it's not. It is definitely supposed to be there. The value of KSP for this is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 36.